I'd like to call back to the stage Alex Melikov. He's going to do a nice little presentation on stable coins and the basis for global DeFi, stable coins. Give it up for Alex. Uh, hello, everyone, once again. Uh, I'm Alex uh, Milikov. I'm with the team of Equilibrium. Um, so we are basically creating the DeFi protocol for DeFi projects, for accelerating the development. Uh, we have uh, built something on top of that ourselves, uh, USD stablecoin, for instance, which is the first uh, asset-backed stablecoin on the US blockchain. And um, today we'll be covering the topic of stablecoins. Uh, so, um, actually, it's quite easy to speculate on this topic uh, when we have 60, over 66 projects functioning in the space uh, uh, on uh, stable point projects uh, which are uh, tradable on exchanges, uh, but if we see how it was back like two years ago or three years ago when there were not so many stable coins out there and uh, you actually people were entering this space, the space of uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, they found themselves uh, uh, having these volatile uh, assets, uh, which uh, today cost like X amount of money, then another amount of money, uh, more expensive, uh, becoming more expensive, and then declining its price, and that was terrible. That was terrible user experience. Now when we have this uh, stablecoin space, we definitely uh, can say that um, the stablecoins are playing a significant role in uh, stabilizing the otherwise uh, volatile cryptocurrency ecosystem. And uh, actually, if uh, it comes to numbers, uh, the sector of uh, stablecoins is tremendous, it's huge. Um, the market cap is over $5 billion. Uh, the dominance of the sector is around 2%. And uh, the huge trading volume, so over 20, 20, 24, around 24 billion uh, daily trading volume. That's amazing. That is for, for yesterday. Um, so we have uh, we have different uh, different models of stable points um, uh, out there. Uh, I would um, split all the stable points into three categories. So basically, we have on the table centralized stable points. It's quite a straightforward approach. Um, I think you guys are all familiar with, uh, with Tether, for example, which is backed by uh, physical dollars sitting in an account, um, account somewhere in banks. Um, and actually, Tether announced uh, recently that they're um, again backed in full, which is quite ridiculous from, from, from my perspective, is what it's been. Doesn't mean that they will not fall back or how it comes. So um, there are decentralized stable coins, which are backed by other, uh, I would say, volatile uh, assets like um, cryptocurrencies. Um, the, the good examples here, for example, BitShares, which were Pioneers in this uh, in this um, for, for this model of stablecoins, they launched the first decentralized stablecoins called BitUSD, backed by uh, BitShares cryptocurrency. Um, so basically, the the most successful projects of these kinds in this space is MakerDAO. We really appreciate what the guys doing uh, for this space because uh, they're doing a great job. They're educating the community. They bring the idea of Transparent stable coins uh, to to everyone, uh, actually making making it popular um, and more established. Um, obviously, USDT stable coin, which we uh, launched uh, on EOS blockchain. There are several other other concepts um, uh, which are coming up on the market. They are not in production yet. I guess some of them, maybe expect except uh, synthetics. They are doing some synthetic assets back to different different assets, not, not, not necessarily to dollar. They have also some, uh, some kind of toolbox with, uh, with the other stable points back to, to other assets like to Korean won and to some, some, some commodities. And also there are some, uh, I'm, I'm, 
actually, um, I call it exotic stable coins. Uh, these stable coins are uh, relying on some sophisticated mechanism. Uh, usually, it's uh, a sort of decentralized banks, right, which with elastic emissions. And um, I'm, I'm personally, so what one of the uh, most kind of um, relevant uh, example of this kind of stable coins was basis, but unfortunately basis uh, didn't make it to the market due to regulatory issues. Uh, for sure, I would not say that all these, uh, every, every, every type of these stable coin models actually have, uh, has own drawbacks. Uh, for sure, uh, like obviously for centralized stable coins, the main, uh, the main uh, drawback is uh, the risk of centralized custody um, and uh, the lacking of transparency. Um, also, centralized stable coins, for sure, they're triggering regulatory issues. Uh, for instance, in, in the UK, uh, we know that uh, centralized stable coins backed by some physical cash uh, is considered as money and in order to do things in the UK with uh, this type of stable coins with this type of currencies you should obtain a license from FCA uh, in uh, certain cases um, when it comes to decentralized stable coins actually it, it is not considered it's, it's currently under rather of regulatory at, at, uh, almost and I would say that uh, decentralized stable coins actually um, uh, in, in this in this sense, uh, um, is, um, are these these stable coins are more interesting, uh, and they're considered as kind of derivatives. Um, but they also have uh, have uh, for sure some some drawbacks. The, the most obvious is that uh, these stable coins still uh, are lacking liquidity, and the 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 scalability of this model is also quite arguable. Uh, the, the, this kind of exotic stable coins, uh, I'm, I'm actually not taking them into account because we don't have uh, this type of uh, projects uh, in production yet. Um, I'm actually I'm looking closely at Terra, Terra project and Silo. Um, well, so looking looking forward to what what guys will deliver. Um, however, stable coins they they can be there, they can be there uh, for sure. Uh, centralized model definitely has has advantage. Uh, the main advantage is that uh, there is no market cap ceiling for for centralized stable coins. So basically, you can collateralize uh, almost unlimited amount uh, of money on on banking account, right? Uh, ha, ha, uh, compared to to the centralized stable coins, when you you are actually limited by the market cap of underlying collateral, and um, if uh, to, to get deeper a bit into details, you actually are uh, unlimited not just with the with the with the market cap, but, but with the actual amount of these cryptocurrency fluctuating on secondary markets, which is actually makes this this ceiling even lower. Um, however, um, like for, for sure, centralized stable coins they have uh, first first mover advantage. And in this sense, they got more adoption, more accessibility uh, across multiple exchanges. And uh, since they, they, they currently have more liquidity, they're listed on multiple exchanges and you can trade it anywhere. Um, in sense of uh, decentralized stable points, uh, we, we have solution for scalability, for sure. Uh, as I mentioned, MakerDAO doing the great job uh, for popularization of decentralized model stable points there. They're actually um, moving the path of embracing more and more uh, collaterals. So the first step was um, actually they're, they're launching their multi-collateral die next week. Uh, this is a huge step towards um, um, more embracing more assets in the ecosystem. And I'm aware that they're working also on obtaining the broker deal license in the in the, U the U.S. Uh, in order to um, probably have some securities socialize in their smart contracts, which is very interesting. It means that the the ceiling they currently have for their supply of, of DAI stablecoins will will 
uh, will increase and basically will be will be almost unlimited. So when it comes to uh, to blockchain platforms uh, on which um, stable points currently are are, um, are based, uh, the the most popular platform still um, is Ethereum, um, and uh, there are over like 33 projects, including USDC, TrueUSD, um, launched and up and running over there. But we see that uh, uh, that uh, some other projects are emerging on other other platforms as well. Uh, I can uh, highlight here EOS. We're also building things on EOS. Like from my perspective, it's one of the most uh, scalable for now, uh, and actually it uh, obtains uh, the huge network capacity, and it's uh, very convenient to build things on EOS. Like I'm, I'm, I'm telling uh, from from technical perspective because I'm, I'm a more technical guy, and I would say that having uh, you know full functional tables with indexes on blockchain that's amazing. We have experience building things on Ethereum, and that was that was tough. Uh, the, why I'm saying that because, like, uh, as we as we have this experience building things on Ethereum, I know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, okay, um, uh, I can compare. Um, so, definitely there are, there are there are a lot of use cases for stable coins. I will distinguish these use cases into two two parts, like two categories as well. Like it's more B two B side and retail side. Uh, the interesting part is that uh, actually the um, the more institutional side is more relevant to issuers of stable points. So, what's the purpose for issuance of stable points? Uh, like, um, if it comes to decentralized models, usually more sophisticated market participants who hold uh, bigger um, stakes of volatile assets, they might be interested in get, getting leverage on these assets in uh, some um, stable dollar value. And they have, they have a, this opportunity, they can uh, virtualize their assets on smart contracts, on smart contracts of MakerDAO, for example, or smart contracts or, of USDT, and generate, um, generate um, USD tax uh, currency themselves. So basically getting the loan at very low APR. For example, on, in, on USDT, uh, the APR is currently 1%, and so uh, make it down is around 5% something, uh, which, is, which is relatively low, right? <clears throat> so for sure, stablecoin is playing a um, critical role in uh, floats on exchanges, uh, it also, it's, uh, you, you cannot imagine trading without, without stable coins, without opportunity to hedge your volatility, volatility risks on, on exchange, and hedging is one of the cases as well. And still trading remains one of the main use cases for, for stable coins. However, uh, like from my perspective, uh, I actually am standing for more crypto adoption. Uh, for um, I, I appreciate when more and more users, newcomers, uh, are actually accessing the the ecosystem, the technology, and get a hands-on experience with uh, cryptocurrencies. And I think that stablecoins, because they're understandable to average user, uh, they play an um, important role in 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 this kind of mass adoption, because everyone understands dollar. No one understands. Um, the the some asset which is uh, jumping in the price every every second every every minute whatever. Um, however, like both important, right? First, like more volatile assets, they create more um, value, right? More like value for overall uh, ecosystem and stable coins. They're uh, they're actually very useful for. Um, daily operations, right? And in terms of like retail use cases, I would highlight here that you know payments and online purchases they're very uh, might be, I mean, stable points might be very very convenient for these operations. 
Uh, specifically, when it comes to high transactable blockchains, which has no uh, transaction fees, uh, like EOS and other uh, proof of stake uh, concepts of, of blockchain technology. Uh, micro lending, um, PPP lending, uh, this, this, these use cases are also uh, much relevant. So um, here I wanted to highlight uh, like my, uh, my uh, takes on the future markets of stable points and how, where things are going, like from my perspective. Um, here is a project called Pundix. Uh, they're doing this sort of um, POS point of sale terminals uh, for, for, for like uh, payments, um, daily payments. And I think um, stable points, if they are going to be in this kind of types of solution, is just one of the examples. I think there are a lot, way more projects which are doing something like that. Um, so I think that uh, they're doing a great job, and if we get, we, we actually can get more adoption through, uh, through implementing this kind of type of solutions when regular users, like average users, can access um, cryptocurrency and use it in daily operations. So uh, another trend I'm seeing on the market is going mobile. Um, so basically this project called Silo, they're, 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 they're doing things mobile first. And uh, they expect it to be like community currency. And th this, this also makes a lot of sense. Um, so um, in this sense, like we, we have been speaking about, um, the guys on the panel have been speaking about um, Libra and uh, all this stuff. I think that um, mass adoption will come with um, mm, actually opportunity to access these currencies in your mobile form, right? That's why I'm saying that mobile first is a very interesting approach and very relevant. So in this sense, uh, we are keeping an eye, we're in equilibrium, we're keeping an eye on the Telegram Open Network because we are very big on that. Uh, we have started some sort of developments on that already, uh, building uh, the initial infrastructure on the testnet. And um, uh, like, from, from my standpoint, um, this um, enormous amount of ins installations on different mobile phones, like millions, uh, have actually provides the access to the huge user base, right? And uh, this actually uh, gives developers and um, everyone who wants like, to roll out their applications, a lot of opportunities. So um, another thing I wanted just uh, to present to you, we have developed USDT payment system, which is, uh, is quite straightforward approach. So it's basically a very, um, very simple uh, payment page, which can be easily integrated into any online <coughs> store, shop, if you, if you want to, to sell some you know, digital goods, this is, this is a very useful solution. So you, we basically have this payment page which is generating on every payment from the users. Um, every merchant is actually um, registering on our system and um, they are providing their IDs in order to generate this page. And we uh, actually provide the users the seamless user experience with the payment with USDT. So we expect um, crypto events selling tickets for that. We have been starting doing that with uh, crypto defiance. Uh, in talks with different other crypto events, which potentially will be selling tickets for that. Also, we are talking to several uh, online stores, and we hope that it will be helpful to 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 adoption of USDT. And um, actually, like particular use case for, for our stable coins. So um, I would highlight, like leveraging my um, opportunity being here on the stage, uh, I would highlight the um, our traction to the date in terms of equilibrium. Uh, so as as I told you, we um, we consider ourselves as a framework for decentralized stable coins and uh, DeFi projects. Uh, the first proof of concept is EOSDT stablecoin, the first uh, centralized stablecoin on EOS, which is up and running in production. You can get hands-on experience on, at EOSDT.com. 
um, we have more than 50 million uh, dollars worth EOS virtualized in our smart contracts, which makes us one of the biggest uh, dApps in EOS space. Um, uh, this uh, collateral is backing uh, over 4 million supply uh, of uh, USDC stable coins. We have developed a suite of applications within Equilibrium Lab. So that's, that's what, what we are doing. This is our team. And Equilibrium loves you. Do you guys have any, any questions? Uh, good question. So, look, um, we firstly created our, uh, all our technical infrastructure use mainnet. Uh, but, you know, um, I think that for sister chains, having uh, this uh, sort of um, stable points, like decentralized ones, is much relevant as well. Um, uh, we're in talks with, uh, with Wobbly, we're in talks with Theos, we're, we're in talks with, um, with Lynx as well. I uh, had a chance to catch up with Fred, he was here. Uh, and um, I think that the, the main problem is that uh, they have not enough liquidity, right? So if you are launching this type of stable coin, you need to have um, a, lot of, a lot of liquidity, collateral, right? Otherwise, you don't have uh, enough assets to be collateralized. But I think that um, uh, the right approach here is building bridges when you can actually wrap your token, like your stable coin, on sister chain. And if someone actually becomes a liquidity provider for this sort of gateway, that makes a lot of sense. And that's what we're discussing with, with this guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I think someone from uh, from the community uh, has uh, uh, has been in developing uh, in development of this sort of things. Uh, it's kind of um, automated software which will be watching up to your position and um, providing more collateral if it's required at some point or uh, actually withdrawing uh, an access collateral if it comes to like um, price growth. Um, uh, we actually like in general, uh, we're expecting the community utilizing our framework, um, making use of uh, that <coughs> ecosystem we have created so far. Um, so we, we, we are building ourselves several projects. Uh, like I, I mentioned that um, like my text on stablecoin space that uh, everything goes more retail. We will be developing some sort of more um, like retail projects ourselves as well. Uh, but another thing that um, um, there, there's another trend I, I didn't mention that in the presentation. Uh, like I think that um, Stablecoin projects are going also uh, to regional currencies, right? So there are more projects uh, on the market which are which is which is which are dedicated to issuance of local currency backed stablecoins. We will be doing that in equilibrium as well. So we we're we're thinking of that. We have uh, partners who are interested in um, Japanese yen backed stablecoin. We have a particular approach for doing that, and now we're in discussions how to roll it out. For Alex Malikov.